Welcome to my first installation of The Stupid Files, where I talk about the most intelligent life form on this planet, humans, and how stupid they can be. Well, at least in my opinion. So please don't take offence, it's just my subjective opinion. Number 1. AirPods. Does anybody else think that these things look completely ridiculous? I normally don't care what people wear, but these wireless earbuds remind me of somebody with two electric toothbrush heads sticking out of their ears, or perhaps a couple of golf tees, or maybe a couple of cotton buds that they forgot to take out. Maybe I'm being mean, but I can't help but think that these were some sort of inside joke at Apple with a couple of engineers daring each other how far they can go while still getting people to buy them. Not to mention that listening to music while you're walking can be downright dangerous. It's estimated that around 37 million Americans have put themselves in actual harm's way by using earphones while walking or driving. Things like stepping out in front of vehicles, bumping into people, or not hearing an emergency vehicle approaching. AirPods are also bright white and stick out super far to the point where it looks like you want everybody to see that you have them. Perhaps that's the point. Anyway, who am I to criticise? They constantly get rave reviews, and people who use them absolutely love them, but I still think they look pretty stupid. Number 2. Loud music in cars. Some people think that they are cool when they turn their music up really loud. They seem to think that everybody likes their taste in music, but usually most people think they're idiots. Not only are they pissing everybody off, they're giving themselves permanent hearing loss. It's just stupid by every definition of the word. I don't mind if you want to listen to music, but keep it to a respectable volume. Number 3. Forced Diversity Everywhere I go, somebody is trying to stick diversity down my throat. I get it. In Australia, the United States, the UK, we live in really diverse neighbourhoods. My wife is Chinese, my colleagues are from all over the place, and that's fine. But do we really need to force it? By having rules or expectations that we must have a certain number of people on TV or in workplaces that meet a certain arbitrary diverse criteria is just silly. The Australian children's music group, The Wiggles, have recently added a new lineup with all the new members considered to be from a diverse background. The university I work for also does it, insisting that the next employee must be from an arbitrarily chosen diverse background. They claim that they're helping, but actually they're just choosing somebody based on their disability, skin colour, or ethnic background, instead of merit alone, which some might label racist in itself. I'm a little bit more forgiving in that I think they're probably just trying to do the right thing, but they're doing it in a way which treats people differently based on their race, age, sex, or disability. Take a look at the Apple website, for example, and you can see forced diversity. Almost every model on their website is from a non-Caucasian background. And what's the point of this? To show that they're inclusive of everybody. But I think probably the real reason is just to sell more iPhones and ridiculous looking AirPods. These companies are so scared of being labelled racist that they try to be the opposite of racist by only employing people from diverse backgrounds, which I hate to tell you is in itself racist. Or in the case of Apple, racist to its core. That's an intentional pun by the way, but not an exaggeration. Apple have been known to brutally exploit Chinese factory workers with many working 29 days a month during which no talking or eating are allowed, some of which see suicide as the only way out. And Apple have also knowingly relied on child labour to cut costs just so they can turn a massive profit. Sorry Apple, your fake diversity just doesn't cut it. Number 4. Joe Biden's senility. It seems like the White House didn't get the memo that their president is senile. Just today, he seemed to forget the Prime Minister of Australia's name, and I quote, And I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. Uh, thank you very much, pal. Okay, so maybe we could forgive him for that. But ordinarily, he barely can string a sentence together. He mumbles, he's incoherent. He even fell asleep in a meeting with the Prime Minister of Israel. But fact-checkers have since proven that he wasn't actually sleeping. He was simply resting his eyes. You know, the desert heat in Israel can really dry out one's eyes. 
Ah, oh, that's right, he was in the Oval Office. Anyway, I don't want to pick on Joe. He was probably a great politician at some point in his life, but it's time for him to retire and move to Florida and make way for the 47th President of the United States, Kamala Harris. That's a joke, by the way, but I somehow guess that it won't be a joke in the not too distant future. And number five, vaccine passports. The most stupid idea to be concocted by modern day humans. The idea is that if you have been vaccinated against COVID, you are entitled to have more freedoms than those who have not been vaccinated. The only issue with this, apart from it being a huge breach of human rights, is that it simply doesn't work. As we've seen in other countries, those that have been vaccinated can still catch, carry and spread COVID. They could even die. Now I'm not saying don't get vaccinated, don't put words in my mouth, but if you think somehow a vaccine passport is going to somehow save you from the unvaccinated, well that's just ridiculous. Your vaccinated friend could just as readily pass the illness to you as well. Yes, there's an argument that when more people get vaccinated, this will put less pressure on the hospital system, but surely that should only apply to people who are at risk of severe illness, which is mostly older people and those who are immunocompromised. Here are the undisputed facts. The average lifespan of an Australian is 82.6 years. The average age of COVID fatalities in Australia is 85. Since the pandemic began, the COVID fatality rate for Australians under 50 is 4 in 12,000. 66% of COVID deaths have been in nursing homes. 73% of COVID deaths involved pre-existing chronic health conditions. And a higher number involved non-chronic but somewhat serious health complications. The only benefit of a vaccine passport, from the government's perspective at least, is that vaccine passports may help to encourage people to get vaccinated, or more correctly, coerce people to get vaccinated, and I think maybe that's the only reason they exist. But even that idea is in dispute. A study from Imperial College London has found a link between COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy and a perceived lack of free will over vaccine passports. Lead author of the study, Dr. Talia Porat, stated, If public health incentives like vaccine passports frustrate psychological needs, for example by making people feel a lack of free will over their decisions, then they might paradoxically reduce people's willingness to get vaccinated. For some, vaccine passports act as incentives to get vaccinated so they can move freely in society. Our results suggest that for others, the passports might increase resistance to vaccination or alter the motivation behind their vaccine decisions in ways that might have detrimental long-term consequences. Personally, I think people should be getting vaccinated not because the government forced them to, but because they see the health benefits. Thank goodness some countries have come to their senses and outright scrapped the idea of vaccine passports, as the UK have done recently. Anyway, that's the end of Stupid Files number one. I'm sure that in the not too distant future, I will be making Stupid Files number two. There's certainly plenty of stupidity in the world. Cheers! <laughs>